Well, hello, community. God bless each and every one of you. I am so excited to be here today uh, to share the word of God with us. Uh, what a beautiful time it is that we'll share together. And can we give God praise for the worship team so far? Amen. What a beautiful time of worship that we have. I don't know about you, but the Lord is indeed great. Amen. And not only is he great, but he is greatly to be praised. And so, uh, as Pastor David so uh, stated so eloquently, I didn't, he asked me did I want to provide slides today, and I told him I did, uh, but then I changed my mind because I didn't want anybody to think that we put something together. So he's going to be just as surprised as you are today with the message uh, because he told me to send him my slides. And I said, well, if I send you my slides, then you know what I'm going to preach about. So... It didn't work out. So we're going to do no slides. We're going to go old school church today. So if you have pen and paper, pull out your pen and paper. If you got your Bible, iPad, cell phone, pull that out and go with me to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3 and the eighth verse. I am so excited and I must give uh, honor to my beautiful bride, my lovely wife. She is so beautiful. We just celebrated three years of marriage not long ago. So thank you for coming, honey. And our two boys, Caleb, he's in the fourth grade. Raise your hand, Caleb. Amen. And Jaden, who's in the seventh grade. Raise your hand, son. Amen. Thank God for them. I would not be who I am without them. And so I give honor to them. And Kim, who keeps me in line, uh, makes sure I, I, I does the right thing. Amen. So thank you, Kim, for being with us this morning. First Peter, you got to say Amen. The more you talk back, the shorter I'll preach. <laughs> but uh, it's not chief season quite yet, so if I could preach for three hours, I'm good with that. You just let me know. If that's what you want, I can do it. I can do it, okay? All right, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. If I was at home, I would ask everyone to stand for the reading of God's Word. So if you would indulge me for just a moment and stand for the reading of God's Word. 1 Peter Chapter 3, beginning at the 8th verse, the Bible says from the English Standard Version, Finally, all of you having unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Verse 9, do not repay evil for evil or reveling with reveling, but on the contrary, bless for to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. I'm going to read it one more time. Finally, all of you having unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind, do not repay evil for evil or reveling for reveling, but on the contrary, bless. For to this you were called that you may obtain a blessing. Shall we bless the word of our God? Father, we thank you for this time together. Now, God, it is your son, your humble servant. God, hide me behind your cross that your people would see you and not I. Touch my lips as an oracle of Christ that I may say only that which you have spoken unto my heart. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And all the people of God said, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God today. For a brief moment today, I want to talk to you from this subject, reunited, and it feels so good. <laughs> reunited, and it feels so good. I'll take it, take from the laughter that many of you are familiar with the song by Peaches and Herb. Oh, y'all know something about music over here, community, huh? <laughs> Watch out now, David. You didn't tell me they knew about music reunited and it feels so good. It feels so good, brothers and sisters, to worship with my brothers and sisters in Christ because when I see you, I don't see skin color. When I look at you, I see the imago day of God, as just so eloquently stated. We were all created in the image of God. And I could imagine that from the beginning of time, this is how we were created to be. My belief is that we don't have to wait till heaven to worship together. I don't want to wait till heaven to worship with you. 
I want to worship with you right now because God is deserving of every praise from every nation and every tongue. The song, the lyric, reunited and it feels so good, uh, goes a little something like this, if you don't mind indulging me. It says, I was a fool to ever leave your side. Me minus you is such a lonely ride. The breakup we had has made me lonesome and sad. I realize I love you because I want you bad. I spent the evening with the radio. Regret the moment that I let you go. Our quarrel was such a way of learning so much. I know now that I love you because I need your touch. Yeah, I know this is a secular song, but I, I would if you would put on your spiritual imagination today and imagine you not being in a relationship with the Father. I don't know about you, but I've been in that place where I felt God's presence absent from my life. I felt him absent and I felt just like the lyrics, I was a fool to ever leave God's side. Because the truth of the matter is, God doesn't change, but we do. Hello, somebody. God never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because God is the same, if God seems far away, then who moved? We moved. And so, as the song says, I was a fool to ever leave your side. Me minus you is such a lonely ride. Growing up, uh, my grandmother used to always tell me, be careful who you let ride in your car. <laughs> Be careful who you let ride with you. In particular, she meant, she, she, she would tell me, don't let the devil ride. Because if you let him ride, he'll want to drive. <laughs> so don't let the devil ride. And oftentimes do we look at other people as our devil or enemy, but sometimes the devil is within ourselves. Our pride our egos, our jealous nature, those are the devils that show up on an everyday basis, sometimes more so than the people who don't like us, than the people who may talk about us. The devil shows up in many shapes, forms, and fashions, more so within ourselves. If you can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> and so brothers and sisters, it is incumbent upon us, Pastor David and I, who I, who I love so dearly, we have decided to go on a journey together of uniting with the mind of Christ. Let's take a look at our text today, if you don't mind, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. There's so much to be said and spoken of when you look at just the first verse. Peter says, finally... All of you be of, how many? Two, three, one mind. Most of us are willing to have one mind as long as that one mind is my mind. Most of us are willing to have one way as long as the one way is my way. Uh, don't look to the person to your left or right. I'm not trying to cause any trouble in your home or your marriage. Uh, but brothers and sisters, the text calls us to have one mind. But the one mind that the text speak of, speaks of is the mind of Christ. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16 says, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. How is it, brothers and sisters, that we can know what our Father, the Lord, expects from us, except we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, who is God? 
He knows God better than we know God. He spent much time with God. And because Jesus knows the Father better than we know him, we must, as believers, as Christians in this day and age, take on the mind of Christ. We've, we've got to take on the mind of Christ. So he says, be of one mind. This, this command brings us back to our need to know God's word. We can't be of one mind, the mind of Jesus, if we don't know what is in his mind. The word of God shows us the mind of Christ. Being of one mind speaks of this essential unity of God's people. And I thought about that. I had to pause for a moment because I thought about the name of your church. Community. Unity. Exists within the very framework and fabric of who you say you are. The church that you are a part of speaks to the necessity of unity in the world. And if you are a part of this body of Christ and you don't represent or live a life of unity, then are you really a part of it? Okay. He says, be of one mind. We are one people, but we are not all the same. My story is not your story. Your story is not my story. We are one, but we are not all the same. While we should be of one mind, we can't expect everyone to be like us. God has built both unity and diversity among his people. That's the power of God. Every, every cell in your body is different, and each one of us, each one of them has its own role, but every cell in your body has the same DNA. It has the same DNA writ written in it, the master plan for the whole body. Every cell in your body has the same mind. I don't know about you, but that was good news for me uh, because that helps me to know that I'm, I'm healthy and I'm on the right track. And as Christians, as believers in the church in this day and age, we ought to be like a mass choir. I don't know about you, but I love good singing. And uh, when I participated in, in choral music while I was in high school and as a trained uh, opera singer, um, the beauty of music comes together when you have the sopranos and the altos and the tenors and the basses, four parts collectively singing together, different notes, but the same song. And brothers and sisters, what if God is calling us to sing different notes, but on the same song? Here it is. Here it is. He calls us to be of one mind. I want to do a quick demonstration really quick, if that's okay. I need two volunteers, please. Two. Vo two. Come on. Come on. And uh, uh, wife, would you come help me, please? I'm going to have my wife come help me, please. Or, or I can have Kim come do it if you want to. Whichever one of y'all decide. Come on, honey. Give God praise for my wife. And tell me your name. Julina. Julina. Give God praise for Julina. Come closer together. This is how I believe we were created to exist. Together. Yes, together. Together. Two people who don't know a thing about each other. Baby, what's her name? Julina. Oh, she yeah. got it right. Julina. Yeah. <laughs> Julina, Julina, what's her name? Um, no idea. <laughs> okay. Lady K, Lady K to be easy. Uh, okay. Um, they don't know a thing about each other, but yet they embraced each other. Oh, Julina is a lover, isn't she? She is. <laughs> but somewhere throughout history, we've started to become full of ourselves. 
And there's this thing called dividers. Excuse me, you guys, excuse me. Can you separate? That has now begun to separate them. They're still close, yeah. but there's, they are not as close as they once were. Would you agree to that this morning? I told you, the more you talk back to me, the faster I'll preach. <laughs> uh, they, they, they were close to each other, but they are not as close as they were once before. Because sometimes, because we think we are, uh, uh, we have the best and we are, we have the biggest egos that gets in between our relationships. Yeah. All right, hold on one second, because we, we're going to create a little more barrier between you two, a little more separation. Oh, yeah, you don't like that, Julina, do you? <laughs> no, I hate it. Yeah. This is, like yeah, yeah, now you're not as close. You can't hug anymore. Can you hold hands? We can try. Okay, yeah. all right. Without touching the chair, you're cheating. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't know. Okay, all right, all right. You say, I know you didn't know. I'm telling you as we go. Okay. All right. Uh, so they're still holding hands, but you know, it, it, because we can't all agree, we can't agree on politics, we can't agree on food, we can't agree who has the best barbecue. We can't agree. More separation. More separation. And then you got Rock Chalk, Jayhawk, and M-I-Z, Z-O-U. You can't agree. Which one? Which one? Come here, let me pray for you really quickly. I need to pray, pray for you really quickly. Uh, uh, even more separation. Well, then you start getting into the hard subjects about homosexuality. You start getting into the hard subjects about equality and equity. All the stuff nobody likes, Julina. All the stuff. And now we end up here. And boom, separation. I like her. <laughs> you, can, you can preach with me anytime. All right. But now here we are. And Kalisha and Julina, who were once close, are now so far apart. Jaden and Caleb, would you come here for a second, please? And Grace, is that your name? Would you come up for me as well? Hi, Grace. <laughs> Have a seat, please. Come over here, Grace, would you please? Caleb, would you sit over there, please? Uh, Grace, would you sit in this chair for me? Because now what we see here is there's feuding and fighting between Caleb and Julina. And now all our children see is a picture of separation versus true unity in Christ. But you know I would never do that, Grace. I don't like her. I wouldn't do it to you guys, I'm telling you. And so now we create a perpetual cycle of division because now we're teaching our children which side to be on. Jaden and Caleb are on this side, and now Grace is on this side. But if we truly had the mind of Christ, we wouldn't allow these isms and schisms to separate what God has joined together. And often we limit that scripture to marriage, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. But brothers and sisters, we've been united by the blood of Christ. We may not have the same DNA, but there's no other blood that can make us closer but the blood of Jesus Christ. And so as a result, when we collectively come together as one body with one mind, we can get rid of these barriers. We can remove these barriers despite our differences. Grace, would you stand up for me? We can come back together again, come back together again as the Lord has intended for us to do. Come together, come together, come together.
They don't all look the same. They're all different. Trust me, I know both of my boys are very different. <laughs> Caleb likes one thing and Jaden likes another. But we have to love them the same. And that's how Christ loves us. We are all different, but he loves us just the same. Just think if Jesus was preparing to die on the cross and he said, I was just dying for the black people. I'm only dying for the white people. I'm only dying for the Hispanics. You're speaking volumes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I got an amen corner over here. But Christ came to die for us all. And we too should have that same attitude. Thank you all really quickly. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let me help you down. Thank you. So, be of one mind. Okay, how much time I got left, David? All day? Yes! That's what a preacher wants to hear. He says, having one mind. Then he goes on to say, having compassion. Remember, this was the measure that Jesus gave to the world to identify his true disciples. In John chapter 13, verse 35, it says, By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. By this the world will know that you are my disciple by the love and compassion you have one for another. Maybe it's hard for the world to identify who the church is because we don't have compassion. We don't exercise love on a consistent basis, but rather we exercise love when it's convenient or it fits our agenda. The Lord did not call us to inconsistent love, but rather agape love. Come on, somebody. He's called us to agape love. He says, Jesus did not command us to like our brothers and sisters, but we are commanded to love them. You may get on my last nerve. <laughs> we may not agree in the boardroom. But when I walk out of that boardroom, I'm not going to love you any less just because we disagreed on one matter. I'm going to love you the same just like Christ loved me. Because if I'm honest, my life didn't always agree with Jesus. I'll only talk about me today because I'm the one preaching. Uh, but... There were times in my life where my life did not align with God's scripture. But God never loved me any less. As a matter of fact, he chased me even more. When I found myself in sin, when I found myself doing whatever I wanted to do, drinking whatever I wanted to drink, saying whatever I wanted to say, doing whatever I wanted to do, his love pursuit increased because he loved me that much and he wanted me to know just how much he loved me. And what if we, the church, would take on that same mentality? Let me move forward to verse 9 really quickly. I have four more minutes and I'll be out your way. Lord, forgive me for telling the story in the church. Not returning evil for evil or reveling for reveling, but on the contrary, blessing. The greatest challenge to our love for others comes when we are wronged. The greatest challenge to loving people is when they mistreat us. I love my wife so much, and I'm so grateful to be married to her. But I do find it challenging. <laughs> I do find it hard sometimes when she doesn't do things I want her to do. 
And I could imagine that when I leave my socks on the floor, it makes it equally challenging for her to love me. Say amen, wives. <laughs> it is hard to love people when they do you wrong. But God's love knows no bounds. When nothing else can help, his love lifted me. He says, it is at those times we are called to not return evil for evil, but to give a blessing instead. Huh? You mean to tell me that I'm supposed to bless somebody who hurt me? That I'm supposed to give something to somebody who met evil against me? You got to be kidding me. I'm not God. But because I profess to follow him, because I profess to be a disciple of Christ, why wouldn't I? How many times did Jesus bless somebody who hurt him, who meant evil against him? It's my job, it's my task as a believer to bless them and not repay evil for evil. That's the easy thing to do. Somebody say amen. Uh, because, you know, I, I'm really petty. And if you do something to me, I'm get you back. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get you back because, you know, I like to get the last laugh. <laughs> There's no dispute or argument or personality conflict among believers that should linger. Even if one Christian gets out of line per se, the loving response of other Christians should be, to keep the problem small and short-lived. Not to go talk about it with other people in the church. Hello, somebody. I, I, I was, I'm discipling a young man, and he goes to a church, and he was called in a moral failure. And, you know, I'm grateful that the Lord doesn't uh, convict me or judge me for my moral failure. Talk to me, somebody. But the church that he was a part of, uh, he decided that he was going to leave the church, and as a result, the church put a letter out to the entire church telling his business. That's how I felt. And it broke my heart because, to me, that's not displaying the love of Christ. Because he made a decision to leave the church, their response was to condemn him and to make him feel worse than he had already felt. And it wasn't because he hadn't made the choice to repent or reconcile because of his sin, because he admitted he was wrong. He showed them that he was willing to do what was necessary to make his relationship right with Christ. But because he no longer wanted to be a part of the ministry, they aired his dirty laundry for everybody to know. What if your dirty laundry was breaking news? He says, we don't repay evil for evil. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 through 47. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you and do good to those that hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same thing? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Uncle Sam loves you as long as you pay your taxes. Hello, somebody. <laughs> and he will greet you if you don't. <laughs> He says, we are called to be a blessing. Here it is in my closing that we may obtain a blessing. Because we love one another, but not only for the sake of Jesus, whose body we are members of, we love one another, but not only for the sake of our brother or sister for whom Jesus died, we also love one another for our own sake. I love you for me. Because what I've learned in this life is it's easier to love you than it is to hate you. 
it's easier to love you than it is to hate you. I may not know anything about you, but I love you because you got on the chief shirt. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I may not know anything about you, but I love you because you love Jesus. I may not know anything about you, but I love you because the truth of the matter, we are all the same. I'm a sinner saved by God's grace. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it's because Jesus loved me that I can love you and you can love me back. And this is where I get excited again because one day, brothers and sisters, we have the same hope that we're going to be reunited with Jesus in heaven because he came, he died for my sins, and he rose again, and I'm going to be reunited, and it's going to feel so good. I'm going to be reunited with him. And brothers and sisters, the old saints will say, oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice, cares all pass, home at last, ever to rejoice. The song says, reunited and it feels so good. You got it, yeah. Reunited because we... Yeah, there's one perfect fit. And sugar, this one is it. We both are excited because we're reunited and it feels so good. Let me make this one appeal because sandwiched in between the word united are two letters. I T. You are it. You are it. You are chosen to bring unity in this world. I remember playing the tag when I was growing up, tag, and I would tag somebody and I would tell them, you're it. I dare you to just touch your neighbor really quickly today and tell your neighbor, you're it. In order for us to be united, we must understand that we are it. We are chosen by God to be different, to be set apart because I am a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation and I've been chosen by God to bring unity in this world today. And I don't know about you but it does feel so good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God.